Hi Floss Tube. this is Nora and welcome to Nora's Needle Nonsense. Thanks for joining me today. Today is Thursday, May 2nd and it is, um, it's the evening. I just returned from, uh, from work for traveling. I just got off the plane uh, about an hour ago and I haven't filmed in a while and I was like, I need to film. I need to do it. So welcome. I'm so excited that you are here today. I've got a lot of things to show you, to talk about. Um, and before I um, even get started, I want to thank everybody that has watched my first two videos. So um, I apologize that I've been away for so long. There have been, um, I, I wasn't feeling well for a little bit and I was kind of going back and forth to my parents' house in Pittsburgh for some time and then, sorry, let me not do right in front of there. Okay, um, so I was at my parents' house for some time and then um, last weekend I was at the Spring Fling Retreat in Cocoa Beach. So it's been busy, but I'm hoping to get on a more regular schedule um, going forward. We'll see about the summer, but um, definitely in May I should be able to film um, well, not next week because I'm going to Pittsburgh, but the following week I should be able to film. So welcome and um, let's get started. Okay, I do have a list. I have table contents. So um, first I'm going to talk about the, um, actually, I'm going to make an addendum to this. Um, my mom watched the one of my, I guess my second floss tube. And she made a comment about some of the things that I said and some suggestions for next time. So I wanted to do some clarification before I got any further. And so I'm actually gonna move this slightly over a little bit. Okay, whoops. Sorry, you just saw my thumb. So this piece, there's no place like home. Let me see if I can bring it down. So, let's see. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to not get the glare. Maybe that's better. You can kind of see the ring light in there, but that's all right. Um, so this is from my, uh, my Aunt Judy Domenico made this. And she, I don't know when she made it. I don't think she put a date on there, but this is the, the cross stitch that she wanted, she was going to get rid of. And I said, no, no, no. And um, I had only said my aunt last time, but I wanted to say this was from my aunt Judy and she actually signed it for me um, back in 2021. So I just wanted to clarify that and give aunt Judy all the credit that she deserves because this is a beautiful piece and I love looking at it. So thank you, Aunt Jeannie. All right. And it looks like, let's see if I can get that back up there. All right. I think that's it. Okay, sorry about that. And then this one, this is the duck. I can't recall if I said this or not. This was from Papa Domenico. Um, and so, and Aunt Judy, um, that is my mom's sister. And this is Papa Domenico. This is my, um, my mom and her sister, Judy, their father. So this is the, I think it's the black, 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 black duck, black duck, Drake. So this was from Papa Domenico, Ralph Domenico. Okay. So, and, um, so good. I'm glad I got that clarified. I know it's been, what, four and a half minutes. So we'll see how long this goes. I still haven't eaten my dinner, so it might only be an hour or so. And I might, um, film another thing, uh, tomorrow if it's getting too long. But, okay, I've got that done. The second thing is I decided to do some rearranging and I put a, 
um, I've got a whole slew of things to talk about. So the, the, I've got like a bookshelf of everything that I want to talk about. So you may see me turning around just because I found with the table, it, it got a little bit too confusing and I feel like it got a little bit too noisy. So let me just readjust real quick. Okay, now we're at five and a half minutes and I'm gonna get started, I promise. So I wanna talk about some finishes that I've had. So I did a few finishes um, and I think these would be, I guess technically they would be starts and finishes because you would not have seen these um, you would not have seen these last time. All right. I probably should have ironed and put this on the design board beforehand, but I didn't. My apologies. I just got home. So this is the first one. It's called Stitcher. It's from uh, Luminous Fiber Arts. And I loved this pattern. It is, um, it's just a monochrome piece. It's a monochromatic piece, but I used the Karen Water Lilies for it. And some parts I did the, I was doing the half stitch and then, um, and going back. And then others, I did the full stitch. Uh, for instance, like the bird, I did the one full stitch at a time, one, one full X. But for the tomato, I did the um, the half stitches and kind of did my outlines first. But I absolutely loved this. Um, I want to do it again. I am contemplating taking out the bird just because it looks a little bit um, blocky. And I don't know if I, I, I like the look of that. So and now that I'm looking at it, It looks like my, uh, is that an Ohio star? It's one of the quilt stars. He looks a little funny. So I'm going to have to take a, a second look at that. But um, I love doing this. This was so much fun. This is on, um, I think it was called Snow Peaks, Snow Caps from... Forbidden Fiber Co. I think I got this at the um, the spring, no, the Beach Please Retreat. Um, but I had so much fun doing it. And this is on a 28 count Lugana. This was the two, two over two with the Karen Mortar Lilies, which I absolutely loved working with. Um, and you may think I look slightly different today. I did get my hair done two weeks ago. And I also got my nails done and my goodness, I haven't got my nails done in a very long time and I'm loving it. It's, <laughs> it's so much fun. So, um, I keep thinking about what my next color is going to be. And I got the, the dip, the powder dip. And this is, um, this will be two weeks, um, tomorrow. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. And then what I've got over here, this is a Jeanette Douglas, um, I think it was her bug scissors fob that I had started and contemplated making for the Jeanette Douglas um, Spring Fling Small Exchange. And I was having some trouble with, I think, some of the specialty stitches and um, I just kind of put that down and I still have a thread there. So anyway, this was the stitcher from Luminous Fiber Arts. I still need to put in the buttons. I think I have some in mind, but um, I will, I guess, rework this one. It's like a, it's like a seven pointed star, I think right now, and it should be eight. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> mm. 
It should be an eight pointed star, not a seven pointed star. So that's my first, um, I guess it's an almost finish. It's not quite a full finish. So then I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll get that done for next time. But I loved working on it and I, I love those Karen water lilies. Honestly, any silk is just amazing to work with. <clears throat> oh man, I think I have a frog in my throat with, with his legs crossed. <coughs> you know, I get, I get uh, bad allergies and the worst part is honestly my eyes, they get super itchy. And so um, I just, I use the allergy eye drops and they help, they help with my eyes, but I guess because it's like a mucous membrane and I think it's a mucous membrane. I'm an accountant, I'm not a medical person, but like as soon as you put the eye drops in, it kind of goes down into your throat. It's, it's a very odd feeling, but you can kind of taste the eye drop medicine down in your throat. And I think that's what <clears throat> got me all choked up about. Anyway, um, the next one that I have, I'm very excited to have this one done because this was a long time coming. It took me much longer than it should have. And part of me thinks it is because I started in the middle and not at the top of the band. And so this is the Country Cottage Needleworks February Sampler. I'm gonna try to get this really close because it is a teeny, teeny, tiny picture. It's, you, it's, yeah. It's, it's a beautiful sampler, but if it was me, I would make a much bigger picture because it is, uh, what, this is a quarter of a page and it's only like one and a half inches by maybe three quarters of an inch, the actual picture. I don't know how people do that whole like, oh, let me put this behind my hand and yeah, you still can't really see it. That's okay, because I have it finished. <laughs> there it is. I'm so excited. So um, this is using the straw silk, which I mentioned on some of the previous floss tubes. Um, so I strand it myself. And this is just, um, well, I guess it's four strands of the, the silk over two. And um, the four strands is very similar to just using two strands. So it's not like I used four strands of DMC, it would be the equivalent to two strands of DMC. And this is on the 28 count tea dyed Monaco and I'm all finished. There are a few mistakes, but that's okay because only God is perfect. And I'm very happy about it. And the next one that I will be doing is not March. So this was February. Yeah, I think I mentioned that. The next one I will be doing, I think, is July because um, clearly it takes me a good, oh gosh, two to three months to do a single sampler. At least this one did. But um, it would be nice if I can use at least some of them. Um, and that was a suggestion from one of my table mates, Shelly, she told me, maybe you work ahead a little bit. So I am planning on doing that and I'll be working on July next. I think. So I'll talk about that later. And then the next finish that I have, I love doing this one too. This was so fun. All of these, they were not like difficult to complete. They were, um, I had a lot of fun. But this is the Spring Quaker from Primrose Cottage. And oh my goodness, I love it. It's beautiful. I actually met um, Nettie, the Primrose Cottage girl, uh, girls, their, their mom, at the 
spring fling retreat and she was a doll. She was, she was really, uh, really great. And we talked about this and I was telling her how much I loved her girls patterns and they're so easy to read and they're good. They're such nice quality. And that I honestly couldn't put this down. I, this took me, um, this took me about, I think two weeks start to finish. Um, I'm not a very fast stitcher, I feel, but, um, I might have been working on some other things at the time, but I do know that I didn't really work on any other cross stitch. So I think I was probably working on maybe needlepoint, um, but this was the only cross stitch I had going. And I messed up a little bit somewhere in here, I think. I either messed up or I decided to omit one of the motifs and I put my initials right there. And this is not using the called for floss. The called for floss is Blooming Crocus from Classic Color Works. And I used, um, it was a Threadworks uh, over dyed cotton. I'll see if I can find the color. It's not a name, it's just a number, but it looked, um, it looked the most similar to this and I really loved the purple. Some of them I didn't, um, like, like down here, I did my half cross stitches and I might've even like did my loop method. Um, and then some of them, uh, so, so there's not a ton of variegation right there, but then you can see up here on this motif, I did the two separate strands doing one X at a time. So it's kind of a mix of, of everything, depending on basically where I was and if I needed to make it easy or if I could concentrate a bit more and have my pattern open. But I love that and that's on 28 count vintage smoky white. It's, I guess, just as Weigart. Um, and this was actually the first time I worked on linen. So I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, you know, I feel like some of my stitches are not the most flat. Um, and I feel like I've pulled it in some areas and I can kind of see the holes behind it. But I'm hoping once this is, um, I guess I'll, I don't know if I'll do this into a pillow or if I'll kind of frame it, but or maybe even a flat fold. I'm, I'm thinking of more about framing it, but I'm thinking that um, once I put some white batting behind it, it should be fine. But I really loved working on that. Okay. And that was the Spring Quaker. And I can't wait to do the I think I'm gonna do the Patriotic Quaker next, but I don't have that pattern. They, they were out of it at um, my local LNS, which is Needleworts in, um, I think it's Altamont Springs in Florida. So just north of Orlando. But um, she has great patterns. They're easy to read. It's that nice thick cardstock and it, opens up into just a regular pretty sure this is eight and a half by 11. so i was able to make a very easy working copy of this and highlight my way through um i find sometimes i need to do that with the monochromatic ones just to keep my my eyes straight because there's all one it's only one color so um, if it was more than one color, I would be able to kind of visualize and say, okay, I know that symbol two is for a red and, you know, the solid circle is for a blue, but this is all, I think they're squares or something. Oh no, actually, let me see if I can just show you a tiny little bit. It's adorable. I don't know if you can see that. but it is a teeny tiny tulip. Is that not so adorable? Oh, see, they think of everything. Okay, so those are the, um, 
the stitch finish things that I have. Now, let me talk about some of the things that I have started. And so, pardon me, and hopefully there's not too much crinkle, but I've, I'm, I literally just pulled this out of my suitcase. So, um, this is just a project bag that I made myself um, using some Pioneer Woman fabric that was on clearance at Walmart. I'm, I had always looked at her fabric and I had never bought it. And then when I saw it on clearance, I was like, yes, I'm going to try it. Um, I will say, if you ever do that, make sure you pre-wash it because there was a fair amount of bleeding um, of the fabrics. So I washed it. I think I first rinsed it in the sink. You know, I tried to get as much dye out. And then I think I, I probably washed it with like some dark jeans or something and a color catcher um, just to, you know, because I didn't want to work with all that extra dye. Um, so it's not the same quality as like a Moda or a Riley Blake, but, um, but it's cute and it works. Okay, so let's see, I've got a few things in here. Actually, you know what? I've got one more whip that I didn't get to show you. You've seen this one before. This is my peppermint purple uh, stitch along. Oops. And I've gotten a little bit further than when you saw it last. I'm still behind, I'm probably behind maybe three or so weeks. Again, it's not ironed, but this is how it's looking. I love this. I love working on it. It is, um, I love the colors. I love how fast it goes. It's really easy to, um, to work up. And right now I'm trying to decide on the, so I've got three colors in here, but I'm, I'm going to do five based on like the, plan layout that I chose. So I've got this, I've got this orange, I've got the green, that's the blue for the outline. Sorry, maybe I should do it this way. I've got the green. Oh my goodness. I've got the orange and I've got this blue. Nope, that didn't really work well. That didn't. Let me get readjusted. One moment, please. Okay, this is my blue. See, I don't have these in order, like the, the orders that they should be in. So, let me move this around. Okay. So these are the colors I have, the blue, the orange, the green. These are the colors that I'm contemplating. I've got a yellow, which is called Big Bird. I've got this bright pink, which I can't remember what that color is called. But, um, and then the purple is Dragon Fruit. So, I'm leaning towards the, the pink and the yellow, but I don't think I can do the pink and the purple. I, I'm not, I don't know if that, how that will look. That might be too similar, but, or I could do the yellow and the purple. So that's the yellow and purple. 
and it looks like there's some few pink strands thrown in there. This is the yellow and purple all together. And then this is the yellow and pink. So I'm think I'm leaning towards the yellow and pink. But if you have any suggestions, let me know. And this is just the, the navy for the outside. And this is a the, the navy is a uh, splendor, like a rainbow splendor silk, which is fine. Um, it's not the highest quality silk. I mean, it's silk, but it's slightly like rougher almost. Um, and the way that the lady at Needle Arts described it to me, she showed me the splendor silk and then she showed me the soie de jay and the soie de jay, you know, it's so shiny and it's so smooth and beautiful. And the splendor is smooth, it feels like silk, but it's just a lower quality, which is why it's, you know, a quarter of the price. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm working on that. I need to, um, I need to do a few more boxes and uh, yeah if you have any comments on what or suggestions on the next color um, or the five colors that I should do let me know okay. and then I love this I love this so much. I feel like I can't put it down and I can't like stop looking at it. Let me smooth that out a bit. Put some clips on. And um, I don't know if you saw my clips. I've got some stickers on there just to hide the, the places that I got them from, which may or may not be clients at my actual workplace. <laughs> so we've got cheers to you, darling, and some uh, like the Marie Antoinette champagne glasses kind of things. But this is jeans and weenies. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. <gasps> this is the pattern. It's from Plum Street. It is so cute. I know I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but I have a wiener dog. Uh, her name is uh, Ellie Elodi, and um, she's actually our second wiener dog, my second wiener dog. She's been with her grandparents uh, just because of the travel. So um, I don't get to see her very often, but I will be seeing her next week. But this is my first, um, weenie stitch and I I just love it. This is on 25 count natural Lugana that I got from Hobby Bobby. Um, and boy, it had been a, a little bit of time since I had stitched on the Lugana and oh my goodness, it is so easy and so nice to work with. I know it's not the same you know, effect because you've got bigger stitches, but I don't have to use my glasses. I didn't have to use my light. I didn't have to use my magnifier. Like I can work on it on the plane. It's great. So this is using most, mostly, this is kind of a combination. I've got the Mohs Sail Silk. Let me see if I can pull that up for you. I've got a what's it called? Planet Earth fibers is the white that I'm using. It's a stranded silk. And then for the doxy body, this is um, the straw silk using the four strands. I think in some parts I might have done six, but that's all right. Um, and doing one X at a time and um, actually, most of these are all one X at a time. And this is in the brown eyed girl color. So, and which I think is very fitting. But there's two doxies on here. Mm. There's two doxies. 
So I need to pick out the other color and I haven't decided if I'm going to do the same color or a different one. You can ignore that. Um, because LOD and Lily, our first dog, they are basically the same color. Um, Elodie's a little bit blonder um, and she's a little bit, or not blonder, but she's a little bit lighter. She's less red and, um, and she's a bit more spelt or she's a bit more muscular than Lily. Lily was a bit, um, she's a curvy girl. She liked to, she was a lap dog. Elodie is, um, she also likes to sleep and be on a lap, but she likes to run around. She's still, she's pretty active. So um, anyway, I'm still deciding, but the other Doxy will be all on this side. Um, and I might make like the other one um, like slightly skinnier, maybe like maybe omit like one row down here or make the legs a little bit longer to make them look like my Doxy girls. So, and if you don't know, Doxy. It's spelled D-O-X-I-E and it stands for dachshund. So uh, usually people that have dachshunds know that's what their nickname is called. But if you don't, it's it just stands for dachshund or wiener dog. So sausage dog. So I love this. Um, I love working on it and it will say jeans and weenies up top. And I think I'm going to put it into a frame because it's gonna be pretty big. It's 157 wide, but there's not a ton of stitching. Um, it's not like super full coverage and the parts that are like more dense, I mean, they're pretty fun to stitch. I mean, you've got dachshunds and then some quilt stars and American flag. The fire hydrant, I'm not sure how I'll feel about that, but I started it, we'll see. So, um, and these were the colors. These are some of the colors that I think I'm using. Some of them I haven't decided on, but this is my red, which I'm loving. This is a Moe's sale and it's a bit pinker actually. It's a pinky red. Um, and this is the navy that I'm using. And then this is a little small blue accent. And then another light blue accent. And this is what I'm going to use, that I, or what I was starting to use for the fire hydrant. Um, I need to pick another color, but I only had so much that I could bring with me on my work trip. Okay. So I started working on that at the retreat. Um, and then the next one that I am doing, I had planned on, and then these are some of the other colors for the flowers and the grass. And this is the white. Um, Sure, I don't have anything else in there. Um, so the next one that I started working on, I was planning on doing it for a small exchange that Stacy of Thread the Needle Stitchery does um, quarterly, and I because I saw this um, pattern in an old. Just Cross Stitch magazine. And um, I fell in love with it right away. Um, but I decided to change it up a little bit and I used um, just one red instead of like three reds, three DMC reds that were kind of um, you know, used for like textural purposes, I guess. Um, but honestly, I'm slightly afraid that I'm going to run out of this, that Mohs Sale Silk Red because it uses a lot of thread. Um, 
but then also I'm I'm not so sure about it because my white isn't showing up the way I thought it would and I think it's because the color is the fabric color is too light but this is this you can see America or I think that this comes through yeah the the other way Robert, I'm not sure why it's like mir mirrored on my end, but um, you can kind of see right down here, I started some some white with that, um, the white silk, the planet earth silk, stranded silk, but it's not really showing up. And I don't know if using three strands will actually help it show up. I feel like it might need to be like a gray or something. Um, I could try like the B5200 DMC and see if that shows up a little bit better, but honestly, I'm, I'm considering taking this out, maybe even trying to save this red thread because it's a lot, it uses a lot, um, and either dyeing this fabric or, hmm. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. It's been a long day. Um, dyeing this fabric or finding a different darker blue. Let me see if I can show you the picture because I only have it as a black and white. And it's slightly mangled. And you actually don't even know what it's gonna say, so my apologies. This is the black and white. This was from Just Cross Stitch, August, 2020. And it's hard to see. And I will, I have my iPad here, so I'll try to bring it up. But it says, oh, beautiful for spacious skies and amber waves of green. America, America, God shed his grace on me from sea to, si sea to shining sea. And I, I just loved it. Now that black and white picture does not do it justice, so. Let me show what it is. Let me increase that brightness. So I saw that and I just thought that looked so beautiful. And now I've had, um, is, it, is it called Oh Beautiful? I don't know if it's called Oh Beautiful or America. I forget. I know the whole song, but I just forget what it's called, what the title is called. But um, yes, so that is what the, um, what it would look like. And they used a Lugana from Picture This Plus called in Hermosa. And they only used like, what is that? One, two, three, four, five. They only used five colors because the white and the blue are the same, but that red, and you can kind of, you can see, they've got a few, they've got like three different shades of red in there, but I'm not, I'm not super into all those color changes and I don't think I had all the reds. So I said, you know what? I know I love this red that Mo Sale did. So let me try it in this. And you can, I mean, there's less variegation, but um, anyway. So I was, I think I got distracted. I was going to use this for my smalls exchange, even though it's actually 109 by 110. I thought I might be able to let it slide just because it's not a super heavy stitch. But I really like it for myself, so I'm not sure. And I might do a different patriotic stitch, which is why I'm showing you this. So, but I thought that was such a nice patriotic thing, and I would probably keep this up all year round. So, next time I'll let you know what I decide. Um, yeah, I really just don't know. I, I might try a little bit of the B5200 and 
see how that looks, if that comes through a little bit brighter. Um, otherwise, I might just have to frog that and try to save as much of that red floss as I can because I don't know if, I don't think that Mo has any more of those, that red silk, but if she did, oh, I should have bought like two hanks of it because I would use that for everything. And I'm not even a big red person, but that red, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And when I say Mo, it's uh, Mo's sale, like M-O apostrophe S space sale, S-A-L-E. And she has um, a Facebook group where she posts silk uh, and sometimes cotton and uh, sometimes yarn every Saturday. And she has, I think, usually about 10 colors and they are over dyed and or most of them are over dyed. And then uh, you kind of, you just kind of you pay her and she sends them to you and they're beautiful and they're a really good price. And she is a dream to work with. She is so nice and um, helpful and so fast really amazing when you can get silk delivered to your door in like just a few days. It might also be because we're both in Florida, but still. Um, so those are my silks from her and I'm loving that. I'm loving that red. So Mo, if you happen to be watching and I might email you also, but that glaze red color is just gorgeous. Okay. I have one more, no, I have two more, sorry. I think I actually have four more, three more. Okay. The next one I'm doing is a, I'm, I am trying my first full coverage. And I saw this, um, I saw this pattern in, um, maybe it was called Cross Stitcher. It was one of those UK magazines. Where are my clips? And I saw this two years ago when I was first starting to get into cross stitch and was kind of dabbling. I saw it, I remember I loved it right away and I was like, oh no, that's way too big. I can't do that. That's way too much to attempt. Sorry. I get so thirsty. I try not to drink too much when I'm traveling and on the plane, because you know, airport bathrooms or airplane bathrooms. Um, what am I looking for? Let me first show you the picture. Let me see if I can find it. So anyway, I saw this in the um, in a cross stitch. Um, There. Hold on. I know I favorited this, or I put it in. Mm. Yeah, at the world of cross stitching, I'm thinking it was like spring 2022. And so this is like the cover, the two full pages. But let me see if I can zoom in on this. So that's what it is. And this is a Susan Bates. And I just, I remember seeing it and I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. I just, I just fell in love with it. All those colors and just, I fell in love. And I always thought it was too much for me to do the attempt. Um, even though it says advanced beginner slash intermediate, I actually don't think there's, there's no French knots. It's just backstitch. And there's, I think about 30-ish colors. So it's really not like a heaven and earth designs. 
you know what? I just realized I don't have my light on. I don't have the ring light on. I've got it right in front of me and I don't have the light on. Hold on. Let's see, that might be a little bit better. <laughs> I'm not gonna redo this, because I'm already 45 minutes in and I, I'm not gonna be able to remember. But anyway, oh my goodness. It's gonna be nice to take a shower and just get in my jammies. This is how far I've gone. I started at the bottom, it's on a 16 count ice blue Ada. Um, I don't really care for working on Ada anymore. I find I split my threads, like the, the, the I split the Ada threads, but um, this was the best color and she did it on Ada and I was like, okay, well, I, I didn't want to use a hand dyed fabric where you, when you'd only see a small, small portion of it in that color. So, I'm thinking her Ada is slightly darker. Like, um, it's, it's a little bit darker. So I might have to do some, it looks, well, it doesn't look darker in, on the iPad, but I can tell in the picture that it looks darker. Um, because I think hers is called light blue Ada and this is called ice blue Ada. So I'm anyway, I might put in a few um, like half cross stitches in a light blue to, to get it to, um, I don't know, look a little bit, bit more sky-like, we'll see. I've only got like the first, not even like five rows from the bottom, so. I've got a long ways to go, but something I can think about it. But I'm I'm enjoying it. It's um it's kind of fun to like park your threads and just kind of do a few stitches here and there. Um and yeah, I wanted to try a full coverage and I'm not quite ready for some of those heavy inner design ones because I honestly do a lot of small things. I don't do a lot of big things. Um yeah, so, and originally I think I started in the middle and I miscounted or something, or I was like, you know what, I can save some of this fabric. So I'm gonna have to frog that eventually, but again, I've got plenty of time until I get to, I have to do that. So that is called Step Into Summer, and that's from the world of cross stitching, I think it was again, like a spring 2022 by Susan Bates using DMC. And I'm doing two strands over the 16 count. Um, I guess this is a finish, it's not that one. Um, and it's a counted camp. I did a kind of a counted campus finish. And this is just a, like a Bargello. And I, this is, I guess, 18 mesh. And I got it from the Needlepoint store in Sewickley, Pennsylvania, near my parents' house. That's called the Porcupine. I'm mean, going to... And so they, the ladies there were very helpful and they, um, I, I told them that I kind of wanted to try out some needlepoint and counted cross stitch um, stitches. And so we picked out some different, um, we picked out some different cloth fibers. And of course the one that I have that I used is not in this bag because it's probably on a floss ring or something, but that's okay. 
I used a Threadworks for this one, but I had so much fun doing it. I had so much fun doing this um, Bargello. I said, I don't know if it's Bargello or Bargello, but it was so much fun. And I used, I think I used two strands of the Threadworks. I don't know if I mentioned that. I have no idea what I'm gonna finish this into, what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe it'll be a coaster, it'll be a tiny coaster, or I might make it into an ornament and like just try finishing a needlepoint, you know, a canvas by myself because whew, when you see the prices of finishing needlepoint canvases, oh, it's, uh, it's a lot, it's a lot of money. I'm not sure why it's so much. Um, maybe if I try to finish this myself, I'll figure out why it's so much. But, um, you know, one ornament, I'm sure, costs about $100 just to finish it. You know, that doesn't even include the canvas, the, especially if you get a painted canvas, a stitch painted canvas, and then all the threads that you have to use. So, anyway. So these are some of the threads that I, that I chose and I kind of wanted to get some different, um, I got some silks, I got some merinos, um, just cause I wanted to try them out. This is the Splendor. Um, this is a, the Karen Expressions. This is 50, 50 silk, 50 wool. And it, mm, it looks like it's dyed, but honestly, I can't tell. I'm not sure if it's my lighting or not. Um, this is the Planet Earth wool. Uh, this is the Pepper Pot silk, which I used for a needlepoint that I'll show you later. Um, it's very nice to work with. This is uh, the Vineyard silk. Um, I don't think I've worked with this one, but it's very soft, um, and it's smoother, I think, than, um, than the, than the pepper pot. And then this one is called Silk and Ivory, and it is a 50-50 silk and merino. So, some beautiful colors. I wanted to get kind of similar colors, and I was hoping to do a, my own little sampler, but honestly, my, uh, my canvas was a bit too small, so I will probably go to Needle Arts and get some more just mono blank canvas to play around with, to just practice some stitches. So, so but I got but I got these fibers from the Porcupine in Swickley. So, and I think her name was Nancy. I think she helped me. So she was very nice and she was, she helped my mom out. So, so anyway, this was supposed to be in my finished start part. Although I, oh well, whoops. The next one that I started on, I did this, I got this all kitted up and it, is Beverly and Debbie, I think, at Needle Arts. And this is a very small start, but it is a counted canvas. And they helped me for a long time because I could not decide on colors. And I decided to make a total change of the colors because the pattern is called Color Delights Pumpkin. <laughs> So they had all the colors for the pumpkin and I said, I'm not really an orange girl, I prefer blue. And so after Beverly pulled all of the orange colors for me, we switched them to blue. So, um, let me see here. These are the blue, these are all the colors that I'm using. I've only gotten to try a few of them. I've got, this is some DMC Pearl Cotton. This is a, um, 
uh, like a variegated one. I don't think it's like, it's not like hand dyed. It's just, you can get it at Joanne's or something. And then I've got some other DMC uh, solid pearl cottons. Um, there are some other spots where you need just like a solid and um, I think I only need two of them, but I wasn't sure exactly which ones I wanted to use. So I just got the, got an extra one just in case. And then this is the, uh, what's it called? The Karen, this is from Karen. And it's watercolors. And so this is a three ply Pima cotton. And let me put this on the board. Let me show you on the board. Um, it's really beautiful. You don't care about the DMC. This one is really beautiful. And so you ply this. It's almost like a pearl cotton, but it's three ply. So um, let me see here. I've got one of them kind of separated already. And you just use one strand of it. Um, and kind of like how you would bury your threads with, um, if you were doing one strand of like DMC on the cross stitch, but, um, yep, you can kind of see that I, I pulled them apart. I haven't worked on this one as much recently. Um, honestly, I was having some trouble, uh, if I was, I wasn't sure if I liked the one color that I had used. It actually, I think I wasn't sure if I liked this color because it seemed a bit more purple. So that's kind of why I paused on it. This one, this is really beautiful. This is the, this one is a Threadworks Pearl Cotton. And it's really beautiful and it's nice because it's a bit more subtle variegation compared to the DMC, which is that, um, you know, it's DMC versus, you know, <laughs> over dyed. So that's why it looks, well, that's why the, the, the over dyed looks better, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> there's, there's not much more of an explanation. And then this is the, um, let me see if I can do all of these together for you. Okay. So right here, this is the, the Karen water lilies. This is the sapphire which is what I used for the, the first one that I showed the stitcher. Um, I just used the same silk and I love it. I know I haven't been, I haven't gotten it in here yet, but this is, it, it will be part of it. And then this one, whoops, is just a light blue. And it's the, uh, this one right here, is the Mohs Sail Silk. And this is a much more, I mean, there's slight, slight variegation in it, but it's it's a much more solid uh, blue, uh, light blue. And then the last part will be some, I guess this is called Petite Treasure Braid. Um, it's the Threadworks Krynik Fine number four braid in color 410141. I have no idea exactly what that means, what that color, if there's a name for it, but that is the, the color it will be. And then we also pulled this, this is a Krynik number eight. Oh my goodness. I need to move my camera down, I think. I'm just too short. Um, so it's kind of hard to see. There's not very much going on here, but when you put this blue 
on top of all the other blue, this, this blue, on top of all the other blues on the blue canvas. It just, it pops really nicely. So I haven't worked on that one as much just because um, I can't really travel with that. I was going to work on it a little bit at the retreat, but it just wasn't, um, it required a bit more concentration. Um, I like counted canvas, I really do. Um, you know, just like I showed you before, but with the uh, Bargello, Bargello, I don't know. Is it barge or is it barge? Something I need to ask one of the, one of the systems, one of the, the know-it-alls. I'm sure when, I bet, I bet tomorrow morning when I go into Google, one of the first things that they talk about is probably going to be something about Bargello or Bargello because everybody's listening. But then maybe next time I see you, I'll know the exact spelling of the words or the, this, how the pronunciation of the word. Anyway, this is me blabbering. I haven't eaten yet. I'm surprised I'm disabled to make it this long. It's only an hour. Um, so because it's an hour, I may wait to do a haul. I might do a haul tomorrow or a retreat recap tomorrow because there's one more. Oh, there's like two, actually there's two more, I guess. Um, and I kind of need an opinion on one of them. So this is the last cross stitch that I'm going to show. So, um, okay, I need to give a little background. I went to, um, in college, I went to a school called St. Francis University. Um, so it's like the Franciscan friars, uh, St. Francis, the patron, He's the patron saint of I think animals and like all living things. I should know this, but anyway. Um, but I, I love him and I love the pic the, the statues of him. Um, he, I just, I love that they do the, the blessings of the pets and the animals at church. So I was, I wanted to do a, um, I wanted to have a a pattern or a, a, a picture, a piece that showed um, the prayer of St. Francis, which um, if you don't know it, I'm going to read it to you real quick. Um, and I don't know if it's a, if it's a Catholic thing or if it's, I'm, I'm assuming it's just a Catholic thing because mostly it's mainly just Catholics that have saints, but um, it's called the, there's a song that interprets the, um, the prayer to St. Francis. So the prayer to St. Francis is, uh, make me an instrument of your peace. But the, the song that is sung at church is called, make me a channel of your peace. And I love that song. And my mama, Domenico, also loves that song. So I really wanted to make something. Um, and I would love to be able to show her. And it's beautiful. So I'm going to, and I'm going to read it real quick. Um, and it, so, and I got this from, don't worry, I asked my priest. I got this from like the ritual song or the gather books. So from, from church. Um, so it goes, Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, 
to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. And so I love this. I love playing it on the piano. You can see that I do, um, I put my chords up there <laughs> to be able to, because this is only like the right hand, the, I guess the melody. Um, but I love this. I love the song. I love what it, um, I love what it says. Um, and I think it's very fitting that I went to St. Francis and I want something that says St. Francis on it. And the, um, you know, I grew up with the song. I grew up knowing the song rather than knowing the prayer. So the prayer goes by, make me an instrument of your peace. Um, and there are some other parts in the prayer that are slightly different than the song. In, it's pretty much the, the same thing, but, um, but I want to see the song on my wall. So anyway, this is my plan. I have this beautiful fabric from Picture This Plus, and it's called Serenity. And so I want to use this fabric and I want to stitch, probably just back stitch, my Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. And I want to call it Peace and Serenity. So this is the fabric. And I started working on it. And I'm not using like, I actually got this from the freebie table at the, at the one retreat, but I'm not, I don't have a pattern. I've looked online. They, I think there, there might've been one pattern, but I, I kind of just wanted to make it myself or there was, sometimes you can find like the Our Father prayer, but, um, you know, the, I wanted to kind of make it myself. So I tried, um, I've tried two different silks, this one, and I also kind of tried two different, um, I guess, fonts. And I honestly don't have the, I'm not even sure where I got it. So I need to be better with writing that kind of stuff down. But, um, this one is smaller and it's using a Vicki Clayton silk that was, um, I guess it was just a mist eye. It was like, she has these um, larger spools of silk that you can, um, you can buy that are just mist eyes. And then this one is called Blue Lagoon and it's that straw silk. And I kind of like the straw silk blue better on here. But, um, so what I have make me a channel, almost a channel. Um, but I think I want to move it over slightly. So I basically have to frog this one and this one, but I think I'll use this silk and I either need to find the alphabet that I was using or find a, find a new one but I want to move it over slightly because I want to be able to I would get this um, professionally framed um, this would be kind of a labor of love and something that I want you know passed down the, to I don't have any children but I this is a pretty special piece um, and, uh, but yeah, so I need to, to kind of work on that and pull that out. I might even actually, I might flip this over 
and start from <laughs> start from this side and you know if I don't have to go all the way down to the bottom then I'll just cut it off maybe I'll do that I think I'll do that actually and I, I'm sorry I called this serenity it's actually it's actually called serene but I'm calling this my peace and serenity start and this is the blue it's I you know my phone goes on like night mode when it hits I guess eight or nine o'clock so everything looks slightly yellow to me I'm not sure if it looks slightly yellow to you but this is that same blue color that is in my peppermint purple my back stitch um, stitch along which I just love I think it's just I think it's beautiful and I think it really does look that I think it is the best color for this fabric. And this is a 28 count Lugana from Picture This Plus. And it's a, um, it's a light, light blue green. I'm trying to think if there's a good, or it's like a, it's almost like a light blue aqua mint. It's very subtle. There's not very, there's just a little bit of modeling in it. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's perfect for peace. And to, I know that I would want to look at this forever. So anyway, that is, those are my cross stitch, I guess, plans. Um, I do have one needle point that I started that I think I will show and I will do because it's getting late and I'm starting to get hungry. I will try to film another um, episode maybe tomorrow morning where I can talk about a little bit more about the retreat and the haul that I got. Um, and we'll see, we'll see if anything else comes to mind. But let me show you the, the needle point. So I got this needle point from Needle Point To Go. It was my first, um, first purchase from them. And I remember seeing this, I guess, on Facebook um, in ads and um, some other ads. And it is a, um, it's a picture of Charleston. And let me see, I think I'm trying to decide which one I wanna show you first, if I wanna show you the, the pattern or if I wanna show you the canvas. So I'm gonna show you the pattern first. This is the pattern. Obviously it's gonna be bigger than this. This is um, Rainbow Row and this is the, um, their stitch guide, which I, I can't like show you the inside, but basically it tells you um, like for each thing, I'm not gonna show too much, but it for each thing, it kind of shows you like for the blue pot, this is what you're going to use. And then these are the stitches that you're going to um, do for that section. So it's very helpful for somebody that's still new to needlepoint that doesn't exactly know which stitches to go where, but wants to do more than just a tent stitch or continental or basket weave, whatever you want to call it, basically a half cross stitch. So this is my progress. I love this. I, I mean, you know, recently I've been, I've been doing more of the stitching, the cross stitching and Basically, I call it sitting down stitching. Then I've done quilting because honestly, all of the projects that I've been working on have just, they've been just such a nice respite and um, from working and everything. So this is the, let me see if I can, I don't know if using this will help at all. So I started over here with the purple house. Let me see. 
I'm not sure which side is better. I started over there and I did the purple house and I did the, um, the doors and then I did the roof up here and I think I did the chimneys. Um, and then I started to fill in the windows throughout. Um, and then I had, did a little bit more roof because I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm basically going from this left to right. No, that's not right. Right to left. But I also kind of want to do some color completion, especially for the darker ones. So I'm pretty much, I think I'm all done with this that silk at the top and that's a that was a pepper pot silk um i got the so needlepoint to go has these kits that basically come with your stitch guide canvas and um all of the threads and you can you there's a few different options i think you can choose cotton only i think you can choose like I don't know if you can choose wool only or silk only. And then there's an option for like our best recommendation. And so that's what I chose. And for the most part, I liked all of the things that they, they selected. They did a really good job with um, kind of using the DMC like floss where it was um, I guess need, not needed, but um, you know, not making you buy a nice silk floss for something that only has a few different, a few stitches in it. So, you know, I, I use some DMC for the windows, the tiny little, you know, windows, like one stitch right here, <laughs> intense stitch. Um, whereas over here, I've got silk and merino and then this is all silk up top so anyway um and there's some that i've never tried before that i've really enjoyed but um one of the uh what you don't know what they're going to pick for you when you say give me you know your recommendation you don't know and so for their roof they gave me a it was like a ribbon floss but it's, I think it's like 100% rayon, which I used like a rayon ribbon for my first needle point. And it was a rayon with, um, it was like a ribbon floss that had metallic in it. And I still haven't finished that because it's a pain in the butt to work with. It frays, it's just, it gets twisted. I just don't like working with it. Um, it's shiny. It looks really nice, but I was like, I'm not doing all of this in a different stitch. It's, you know, it's not a stitch that I'm, this was a new stitch that I was doing, not regular tent stitch. And I said, no. And so I went to, um, my other needlepoint store, which is called Novella Needlepoint, and that's in Winter Park, Florida. And they really just do needlepoint. They have a lot of canvases and they have, um, they have floss, but they don't carry cross stitch things. They have some things that are stranded, um, including like the, I think it's the full line of the cottage garden threads. So um, if you're interested in those, they have them and they have a lot of them. I've gotten a few just of colors that I liked and things that I thought I would do, but um, I'm sure if you called them, I think they would probably send things to you if you are looking for those cottage garden threads. Anyway, that's not the point. I didn't use cottage garden threads for these. <laughs> I used a pepper pot silk for this roof because I'm, I'm not doing rayon. I said, I don't care. I'm not doing it. I'm, this is supposed to bring me pleasure and make me happy. And that rayon is not going to make me happy. So 
and I only used a little bit of it. So that is what, um, and then I've started a little bit on the, the background, which is a, the Petit Silk Lame. And um, I'm not sure about it because you can really see um, the background, uh, like the, the, the canvas, um, more than I thought you could more than I thought you would be able to. Um, so, let me see, yeah. Let me pull it out. It's very thin. It was pretty easy to work with. Um, and these are my threads. So it's just a whole bunch of different ones I've got. Um, you know, the Petite Silk Lame braid. I've got these Tilly Thomas Essentials. It's 50 silk, 50 merino. And you just use one strand. And it's very nice um, coverage. It's, it's probably like an eight weight thread. It's thicker than a, it's thicker than a, uh, a 12 but but you could probably use this for um like a 14 count or so you could definitely use that it had really nice coverage on the 18 count canvas um one of these this is a like the boucle boucle i don't know how you say it <laughs> um and it is used just for a little bit in to give some texture and that is used in right here these like hanging vines and it does look really good it's again it's kind of a pain to work with because it's 100 percent rayon but i do like the effect and it's um you know that uh, what's that called crimpy kind of texture um excuse me um they give some dmc flosses um they give some splendor for the windows just the just like a white or a crew and then um, a few weak style works which well, I don't know if it's believe it or not. I don't know how hard it is to believe, but I've never used Weeks weak Dye Works before. So I'm excited to use these because, you know, that's what all the cross stitchers use, but very pretty colors. And I think, I think they might be for the trees. I think they might be like the flower parts on the trees. So, Pretty colors that I would use again. So I was happy about that. Again, some more of this Tilly Thomas Essentials. Um, I can't see that. I got, a, I got a lot of those, but I do really like them and there's a lot extra. Um, oh, this is the, the this is Ed, the Edmar Boucle, Boucle, I'm not sure. Yeah, 100% rayon viscose in color 53. But it does look really good, I must say. It, it gives some really nice texture that you would not be able to get any other way. Probably unless you were to do literally French knots all over. Um, this is the a nicer look of the planet earth silk fibers and this is the same silk that i'm using the same in white for some of the other things i decided to try this to get the white because um or this this green came with my kit i'm, I'm talking about something else now but I decided to try that this white because I enjoyed working with with it for the needle point and so many people talk about the the white um 
their white stitch is not looking great. Um, and I thought, okay, well, maybe I just, maybe I try to do use silk instead. Uh, I don't use white a ton, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not like it's that much more expensive. And if it's a much more enjoyable experience that makes my stitches look good and like nicely, then it's probably worth it to spend an extra $2 <laughs> for, you know, something that you're gonna be spending hours and hours on. Um, so anyway, that was kind of besides the point, but this is the other Planet Earth silk fiber that they got. This, so this one is much more variegated than this one, but they both look really beautiful and you can see all that shine. And then this one, I was so happy to see this. This is the Silk Road Fibers and it's called Irish Eyes. And this will be for, I think the palm tree. So um, a beautiful green, kind of similar to one that I already have, but that's okay. Cause I love this. All right. I think that's all I have that I've worked on. I think I'm gonna save the rest to talk about later because I'm starting, my throat's starting to go. I wanna shower. I wanna get in my jammies. You know how it's been after you're away. And I need to clean this up. But I've got a lot of haul that has come in the mail. Um, and some of it I have not opened yet. So I think I'm going to try, I'm gonna try, try, try to not look at it until tomorrow to do kind of a reveal. Um, although one of them is a box, like a subscription box. So maybe I will open that one by myself and then just so that I and then give kind of a warning uh, because I don't know if I can wait until tomorrow to look at it to look at what I have but it's already an hour and a half almost an hour and a half so um anyway thank you for joining me thanks for sticking with me um I had a good time I'm glad I got to show you some things I apologize that I was so so delayed um, with getting this out there um, that was not my intention you know I'm kind of I don't know if I should say this but like <laughs> I would I wanted to film I did and I would be um, like in my hotel room at night with the stitching that I had you know brought with me and I would kind of talk to myself and be like, okay, this is the stuff that I can talk about, this stuff, and practice. Because I wanted to do it, but I just, the it's so dark in my hotel room. I, it's, yeah, I don't think that would be fun. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to film there. I've had to do a doctor's office, a doctor, like teledoc appointment in there. And yeah, it, it wouldn't be good. Anyway, um, thank you for sticking by. Um, thank you for, you know, watching, subscribing, commenting. I think I need to look, I think there's probably a few more comments on the other videos that I need to check out. Um, if I haven't responded, that just means that I haven't seen the comment yet. So it's not, I'm not ignoring you, but I love seeing the comments and, uh, I will respond or at least acknowledge all of those comments. So, um, so thank you. If you feel so inclined, feel to feel free to leave a comment or to subscribe. I'm going to be better, I promise, um, because I've got some good things going on. And um, yeah, I think I just want to share what I like to do. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's that's about.
about it. I'm going to sign off for the night and um, I will do another episode soon. Thanks for sticking by um, and happy stitching.